Hey everyone, Michael here. In this video, we will be going over Meta's most asked interview question in 2024 so far called binary tree vertical order traversal. It's a medium problem which requires knowledge of the BFS or DFS algorithm. I'm going to be going over the BFS approach since I personally find it more intuitive than the DFS approach. Before we get started, if you are preparing for coding interviews, definitely check out my platform, Algos with Michael. I teach you the patterns to solve various categories of interview problems such as sliding window, top K element, and binary search. Specifically for my YouTube audience, you guys get a discount using the code ALGOHELP. All right, on to the problem. The description says, given the root of a binary tree, return the vertical order traversal of its node's values from top to bottom, column by column. If two nodes are in the same row and column, the order should be from left to right. So we have to traverse a tree structure from left to right and top to bottom. Let's look at this example. The best way to visualize how the tree should be traversed in this way is to just draw vertical lines between all the nodes. So each vertical line represents the nodes that should be grouped together in our output. Starting from the left side, we have node 9. Then we have node 3 and 15. And remember, we go top to bottom. That's why it's 3 and 15 and not 15 and 3. And then we have node 20 and then node 7. And that would be our answer. One more example is this tree. Once again, to visualize it, let's draw vertical lines between the nodes. The traversal for this tree should be 4, then 9, 5, then 3, 0, 1, then 8, 2, and then 7. Pretty simple to understand what we have to do, but the most efficient algorithm requires thinking a bit outside of the box. In order to traverse a tree using breadth first search, you have to use a queue data structure. This is because in the BFS algorithm, once you visit a node, you add that node's children into the queue to be processed in later iterations. A DFS, on the other hand, would visit a node and then immediately start processing the children of that node. So what should go inside of our queue for this problem? A tree node, maybe? Unfortunately, only tracking the tree node during the traversal would not solve this problem. We need to keep track of what vertical line position we are at. So let's draw those vertical lines again for this example. An easy way to represent these vertical lines is on a number line. So node 3 is our root node. So we can just consider this vertical line as the origin 0. This vertical line containing only node 9 would be at position negative 1 on the number line. This vertical line would be at 1, and finally this line would be at 2. So as we are performing our BFS algorithm, we should also be keeping track of the position that we are at so that we can group these nodes together. This means that our queue must have a tree node and an integer value representing the index position. In terms of grouping nodes together to eventually be returned in our output, we're going to need another data structure. Each position on the number line is going to be unique. So we can just use a hash map where the key is the integer position, essentially the index value of the vertical line, and the value is the list of nodes from top to bottom at that position. A BFS algorithm inherently will traverse the nodes from top to bottom, so it makes our algorithm a bit easier to understand. All right, so we have two data structures where the queue will be used to run our BFS traversal, and the hash map will group the nodes together vertically from top to bottom. But we are still missing some things in this algorithm. Let's say we traverse this tree and group together all the nodes accordingly. How would we output our groupings from left to right? Our map has no ordering. So we're going to need to keep track of the minimum and maximum index positions that we come across as we traverse our tree. That way we can add the groupings to our output list from left to right. All right, we have everything we need. So first we're going to add the root node with an index position of zero. Our queue size is one. So we need to process one element in our queue. The pair three zero gets removed from our queue. And then our min and max index do not change since it's already zero. Index zero is not in our map yet. So we can add a new list in our map with the node value three with a key of zero. Now it is just like a normal BFS algorithm. We add the left node in our queue. 
with the current index minus one because we're going to be looking at the minus one vertical line index. And then likewise, we're going to add the right node in our queue with the current index zero plus one. So we're going to add 20 comma one into our queue. All right, so now our queue size is two. So that means we need to process two elements in our queue. So the pair nine negative one gets removed from our queue and our min index gets updated to negative one. And then our max index stays the same. Negative one does not exist in our map yet. So we add a new list in our map with a node value of nine. This node does not have a left or right child, so we can just move on. The pair 20 comma one gets removed from our queue. Our min index stays the same and our max index gets updated to one. One is not in our map, so we create a new list with a node value of 20. The left child 15 gets added in our queue with the current index minus one, so that would be zero. The right child seven gets added in our queue with the current index plus one, which would be two. The queue size is two, so once again, we're gonna process two elements. The pair 15, zero gets removed from our queue, and then our min and max index remain unchanged. Index zero is already in our map, so we add the node value 15 inside of the existing list. This node does not have a left or right child, so we move on, and the pair seven comma two gets removed from our queue. Min index is unchanged, and then max index gets updated to two. Two is not in our map, so we create a new list with the node value seven. This node doesn't have any child nodes, so we move on, and now our queue is empty, so we're done traversing the tree. And now, since we know the min and max indices, we can build the order of vertical nodes from left to right. So the order would be negative one, zero, one, and then two, giving us this final output. All right, let's go over the code for this solution. So our input is a tree node, which is the root, and we need to return a list of lists of integers. So first, let's initialize our result. So we know we're gonna need a list of lists. And we can just call that result equals new array list. And if our root is null, then let's just immediately return whatever our result is, would it be empty. And now this is where we need to initialize the two data structures that we talked about. So we're gonna need a map where the key is the integer and the value is a list of integers. And so this list would be the list of node values. And we can just call this map equals new hash map. And then we also need a queue. And we need to keep track of a tree node and an integer position, essentially the, the, the vertical line index. So we could just use a pair. And the first value will be the tree node, and the second value will just be an integer value. And we can just call this Q equals new linked list. And we also want to add the root into our Q. So we could say Q dot add new pair root. And the initial index position would just be the origin, so zero. And now we need to initialize the min and max index that we discussed. And these can both be initialized to zero initially. And now this is where we're gonna you know, start our BFS algorithm. So we could say while the queue is not empty, uh, we're gonna get our size from our queue because we need to know how many times we need to process the elements. So now that we have our size, we can loop up to whatever that size is. And we can immediately pull from our queue. So we could say pair oops, tree node, integer pair equals q dot pull. And let's extract what the index position is. So we'll say pair dot get value. And we want to update the min and max index uh, based on this index value. It may, it may be unchanged, but we still want to compute this every time. So we could say min index equals math.min between 
min index and index, and then max index equals math dot max between max index and index, right? So that's going to get updated uh, every iteration, and we're going to use these min and max uh, values later on. Uh, now we need to start building the vertical order uh, for each of these nodes and grouping them together. So we have the index position. So we can say if the map, if it does not contain the key index, that means we need to create a new list at this index. So we could say map.put index new array list. And now that we have that list created, we just need to add the node value there. So we could say map.get index dot add and then we're going to say pair dot get uh, get key dot val right so that's building the list of node values uh, from top to bottom and now this is where we're going to add the left and right child of this node assuming they are not null so let's get that node value. We'll say tree node node equals pair dot get key. If the node dot left is not equal to null, q dot add new pair node dot left. And then we're going to get the current index position. And since we're going to the left, we would need to subtract one, right? Because if you think about it on a number line, if we're moving left, that would be going minus one. Uh, and we're just going to do the opposite step for the right side. So if node.right is not equal to null, q.add new pair node.right index plus one. And that's it for our BFS, but we're not done yet because we still need to actually build uh, our output from left to right. But fortunately, we have our min and max index that we've been computing. So we can do this really efficiently. So we could say for int i equals min index, i is less than or equal to max index plus plus. And then we just say result.add map.get i. And then return our result. So that's it. Let's make sure that this solution works. The time complexity of our solution would be big O of n, where n is the number of nodes in the tree. During a BFS traversal, we have to touch every node one time. So adding elements inside of a queue and a map is constant in time complexity. So it actually doesn't affect our overall time complexity. And then our space complexity is also big O of n, where n is the number of nodes in the tree. In the worst case, we have to add n nodes in our queue and create n entries into our map. So that would be big O of n plus big O of n, which is two times n, and then we just drop the constant. If you're interviewing at Meta anytime soon, this problem seems like it will be very important to understand. So I hope this explanation makes sense and you're able to implement it on your own. Check out my interview prep website, Algos with Michael, to learn the coding patterns. You can use the code ALGOHELP for a discount on the platform. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys later.